Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV, and it took me long enough. I seem to have gone about it in backwards format, finally getting my hands on a 2400 BH Imagine after recording, I don't even want to count how many similar floor plans out there from other manufacturers, but giving credit where it's due, this is the OG. This is the one that everybody else is doing that RV R&D on. One of my viewers, comment down there, let me know what RV R&D stands for, let everybody else know. So why has this one spawned so many inspired copies? And they all do something better. I'm not saying you should ignore all the other ones, I'm saying you should see what this offers. Maybe it is, maybe it's not the best fit for you. This is full Big Papa Imagine right here, and it loves it when I call it Big Papa, by the way. But this has the vaulted ceiling and that smexy looking nose cap. But it also has a true queen bed, not one of the Shorty McShort pants uh, beds up front there. So if you did want to swap out that backbreaker death wafer for a mattress of your choice, it is much, much easier to do in this RV. Actually, even the way the bedroom is structured, easy to get out. The storage around that queen bed in the bedroom is also, I think, some of the best executed bedroom storage on the market today. Uh, this RV, in, speaking of storage in general, for no bigger than this thing is, they cranked the storage in the sucker. The entire entertainment center and kitchen, every square inch they possibly could, has stuff to store in it. What's interesting here, though, is they went a wee bit bigger on the slide out, and that allows them to have a triple seat theater recliner with a giant fold-down console armrest, very similar to, say, like a Reflection 2260RD uh, or even a, a, like some toy haulers. Um, you can also put a u dinette in this if you are so inclined, whereas some manufacturers might give you a two-seat theater seat or a two-bench dinette. This one is a little bit bigger as a result. You got a flip-up cargo bunk. It doesn't have a rear access door. And giving you some of that good and bad fare information like that, that's what we're going to do here for you today. If you're new with us, if you like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button. Anybody else returning, hit that like button if you appreciate what we do. Let's get going. Now, one of the first things I want to mention here is, is almost kind of touching back on something I mentioned almost offhandedly when this video first began. You have a choice in some seating swaptions in this RV. So they made the 2400 BH a little bit bigger than some of the other things that are similar to it. Like there are some other manufacturers who uh, I, I'm not saying they're wrong for doing this, but they've said, okay, we can make one that's smaller, lighter, and less expensive. And that's an attractive set of qualities, certainly. But the little bit larger slide size they have in this, it's like a two-third super slide. You could choose between the, uh, you know, triple recliner theater party lounge sofa that we're looking at right here, which does have heat massage features on the two end chairs, by the way. You can get a U dinette. You know, you can, you can kind of change this up. I'd be kind of curious to know, like, what seating situation in a bunkhouse model like this do you think works? And I'm kind of torn on it. I'm open to your suggestion because... Being a bunkhouse model, I think a lot of people like the idea of some kind of um, dinette, you know, some kind of table to be able to wrap everybody around and, and feed everybody and enjoy some of that family time. But at the same time, I, I, I tend to, we do most of our eating and, our, and all that kind of stuff when we're outside. Um, that's interesting. They put USB plugs on top and household on the bottom. They're not the first manufacturer I've seen do that. I've always... I thought the mismatch was interesting. But anyway, what I'm getting at, um, if you're going to be stuck inside on a rainy day, I think the sofa is kind of nice. Now, this down here, th I mean, you can really load some stuff in there, but we're going to see that this does have a flip-up cargo bunk fo uh, function in just a few minutes. Now, with the u net, in theory, you could pop the table out of the way, and if you had to, you could plop yourself down over here with a U dinette on a rainy day and, and kind of lounge around. But anybody who says that a dinette bench is super comfy and just as good as a sofa on a rainy day, I will respectfully disagree with extreme vehemence. That's a person who probably has not camped, uh, at least not, not enough to know that that is just simply categorically... Um, not really true. Now, it does have a stovetop exhaust vent hood, but they also include an extra little simple power vent fan right here. Uh, it is the four inch fan. You could certainly upgrade that to a larger vent fan if you're so inclined. And again, being full Big Brother Imagine, it does have a vaulted ceiling. I'm not using a fisheye lens. 
Uh, actually, if you look just above that cabinet, you can see how it arcs up right there. You know, I'm using a flat angle lens as that cabinet kind of exposes. And I think one of the things that really makes this floor plan work so well is including that refrigerator over there in the slide because it takes the largest single bulky appliance and it gets it off of the floor plan. It gets it totally, totally out of the way. Um, now, it's a carpetless floor. Would you be interested, would you prefer they re, they retain the carpet in the floor? Would you prefer they go carpetless? Perhaps uh, that's something that they could work into a future update baggage understanding. It will probably run a few hundred bucks to do that. Now, uh, that's a 12-volt DC compressor fridge, uh, 10 plus cubic foot in variety. That's the standard. You can uh, get a gas electric two-way. It will drop down to a little over eight cubic foot in storage, so keep that in mind. But far less juice when you're boondocking. They're also getting good about including USB plugs over there, which is why it kind of sort of went, huh, when the um, the bunks had household outlets and USB outlets, but not for both bunks. Speaking of outlets, they did a great job in this kitchen of putting outlets down where they are far more, uh, you know, easy to access. I think that was fantastic. Now, that big sliding door up there, that is one of those things I think helps this floor plan look and feel bigger because you can visibly see uh, like if I sit down here at this theater seat, you can see from the front of the RV all the way to the back of the RV. Now, this also exposes something here uh, that may may kind of miff some people. This does not have a great deal of campsite window coverage, but it's not as bad as you might think. When you actually sit down here, those bunk windows, you can kind of cheat the difference and you can use those as campsite windows once you're sitting down. It's not quite as obvious how that works. This is also an extremely thoughtful detail. Remember I talked about people who camp versus people that don't? Somebody who actually camps realized you need a, a, like a recessed toe kick right in front of your kitchen stuff so you can stand directly in front of the sink or directly in front of the stove and not have to lean forward constantly which just wears your lower back out um i'm i'm you know i'm not camping so i can i can be sweating to the oldies like richard simmons that's just me now they're doing a 60 by 80 true queen here standard which is really really nice they don't have any sort of king or twin or full swaptions. This is just the bedroom that they put in these. If you were going to ask, and that answered a question for you, leave me a little note to say thanks, nerd. Now, if you would be interested in seeing uh, like a, a king bed option or something like that, let me know. I can relay that to the factory as well. Who knows what they'll be able to work up. It will require that they change up uh, some of their bedroom uh kind of cabinetry though you see that you've got that kind of um you know blue reading slash you know white spotlight in here i'm going to pivot you slowly up into the right so you can see that it does in fact have tv hookups in the bedroom a little bit of an afterthought and we do have a vent here above the bed it's not powered it's not far from a light, so it could be, uh, you could steal some power for it fairly easily. Um, there is not a second air conditioner option. This 2400 series is uh, 30 amp only, so kind of keep that in mind. Now, <coughs> pardon me. It is uh, interesting. They put some household outlets over there, maybe for like a standing fan, but for like phone chargers or anything like that. I love these headboard power pockets. Households and USBs on both sides of the bed. Um, I have asked, previous viewers have chimed in said, uh, that many of their CPAP machines actually fit in there uh, pretty awful nicely. But like I said, the bedroom storage in this is, I think, one of the very best in class. I love that the overhead doors don't fall on you. You've got double dresser drawers on both sides. And then they have like a, a sliding two-layer footlocker storage under the bed, which you could always take the tray out. But I kind of like it in there for loose little stuff, you know. Backing up a little bit, you see just how big that fridge is. And then looking through all the cabinetry here, it is all pocket screwed. It's all sealed edge thermal foil countertops. That is a stainless farm sink with a one piece rollout dish drying rack sink cover. And the drawer below the oven I like, it's got those light bright style pegs where you can like pots and pans drawer. You can keep your pots and pans in place with those handy little pegs. Just simple, stupid, little low budget thoughtful stuff like that like that's a tcl roku smart tv we've got the folding cargo bunk over here i mentioned how uh this is that triple recliner theater seat but we also have the uh blackout roller shades above that um one of the things that i think i did miss putting on camera just now was right next to the door under the pantry tainment center you've got a simple little shoe garage 
You know, little stuff like that just to cut the clutter by the door. One, uh, nice, thoughtful, handy, very welcome. Two, maybe potentially even like a safety factor so you're not tripping on stuff walking in or out of the RV. Uh, very important uh, at nighttime. Now, if we look up here uh, by the door, you might notice that it does a frosty glass window. They don't do a full viewing window. I've heard from some folks say like, man, I camp in California and you know those Lippert shades that you can install? They'll melt in the sun in a full view through a window. Okay, well, that's good to know. Thank you for sharing that. As a Midwestern Michigan boy, I don't have great knowledge uh, and understanding of that. But this light right here, if I click this off, first of all, you can turn that off, but it is. Uh, it also has a motion sensor. You can turn it on off or you can put it in motion mode. I want to kind of put my hands over that so it's not getting you blinded by the light like Bruce Springsteen and all revved up like a deuce, another runner in the night. Little towel bar on the door. Nice little, again, thoughtful detail. Open pocket storage in the bathroom uh, works pretty well for towels. I don't think I'd put small loose objects in there. Um, speaking of small loose objects, uh, my brain kind of came into, well, question right there, but neither here nor there great leg room, hip and shoulder room all around that toilet. That is a very fluffy, friendly situation going on. Uh, the uh, medicine cabinet over here uh, kind of tucked off into that corner. A little tricky to get on camera. Oops, I got the towel rod in view. I'm going to get a view of that thing from the other direction. First, though, taking a look at uh, the, the shower headroom with the vaulted ceiling in this one. I'm a little over six foot. I It, it was like, it was, it was mama bear. It was just right and as promised giving you a look here uh, uh from the other direction of the bathroom notice too they don't put the peekaboo i smell you gap at the top of the door in these they do fully enclose that although being fair this is a rare miss from what i've seen in imagines a little gap in that trim if i see something i say something i try to be fair they are usually pretty solid on that kind of stuff. That is a rare miss that I've seen from this brand, but I've never claimed any RV perfect. Now, obviously, we have the slide closed, and this right here, uh, I expect someone's going to leave a comment to the tune of, you had me until road mode. When you close the slide on this one, you flat lose the bedroom. Now, there's enough space here that if you want to make a little traveling sandwich, the door doesn't open fully. I think that that's enough for traveling access. I, I, I mean, that's subject, you know, to individual scrutiny, but I think it's okay. But it does uh, cut off that. So you can get to the bathroom, you can get to the bunks, you can get to your kitchen and your storage. You're going to lose the bedroom. But I got a question for you. On that note, some manufacturers will include a second door to get you in the bedroom to bypass this little problem up here. But some people don't like that door. And I, I, I'm kind of curious. Like, no one's ever going to completely agree on this. But in your opinion, what is the best way to go? Second door for road mode? Understanding you can always deadbolt it for privacy and security. Or no second door, but losing out on the bedroom in road mode. Like, which is the lesser of the two evils, in your opinion? Now, taking a second look at the weights and the measures here. Um, this is a model for an appropriate uh, tow package, half ton, or potentially... Uh, large class tow package SUV could work for you. You may not necessarily need to give up your daily driver. You may not necessarily need to go, you know, spend $80,000 on a three quarter ton truck just to take your family camping. Now, um, I don't feel Ford Rangers should necessarily apply. Someone's going to say, well, my Rangers rated for 7,900 pounds. It, yeah, but this thing is 100% of that max capacity. And I don't necessarily want to, you know, to do power squats at 100% of the weight that I can possibly power squat. Not to mention, I think the hitch weight of this would, would overpower a Ranger. This is one of those models that um, initially it almost had too light of a tongue weight. So they added a drop frame uh, chassis system in the front here. Because if you look at the black skirting, that's where the floor is located. You can see how this actually drops down kind of like a fifth wheel. And not only do you have that nice privatized docking center, you have some serious storage in here. David Blaine teleporting to the other side. One of the other things you might notice here is when we do step up to Big Papa, imagine, and, and folks, understand, it loves it when I call it Big Papa. Uh, you, you start picking up slam latches on those extra large front doors. And speaking of extra large, that awning. Imagine is fantastic. For, Jay Feather is also, interestingly, very good for giving us a, a, a maximum sized awning. 
Um, speakers are high. I've talked about that before in my videos. I'm not going to belabor that point too awful hard. We have some outside uh, TV hookups next to a furnace exhaust, which is on the camp side of the RV. Only really a concern if you're going to be doing some cold camping and spending a lot of time outside, but still a potential concern I want to point out. Goodyear Endurance Radials and prepped for TPMS, which I can't even spell, but it does stand for Tire Pressure Monitoring. You see that little black circle under the A in uh, Imagine over here? That is a magnetic holdback for that anti-slam entry door that you're looking at right there. Now, I do want to clarify something. Um, I, I Again, I try to be fair. I try to be candid. You see up here, three year, and you, you, you start assuming warranty. The RV has a one year warranty. There's a three-year structural warranty on here that covers a variety of items. And uh, maybe a local member of one of our teams can help like, you know, get you a breakdown of some of that stuff. Um, that, that one plus three has become a very common thing. Now, Grand Design is the one that basically fathered that and made that very popular. Uh, but I, I do want to offer clarity as to what that covers and what it doesn't. It is not a full everything in the RV three-year warranty. I've had some people mention that, and I don't, I believe that um, uh, uh, lying by omission is still lying, so I don't want to never say anything about it. Little mini fridge out here. Uh, keep in mind, this is 110 powered only. That's not 12 volt, so that does not operate when you're going down the road, uh, unless you do some uh, DIY work and wire an inverter to it, which this is not currently prepped for. That's actually a question I have for you. Would you be interested in seeing these gain some type of inverter prep and or expanded solar and inverter combo package. Um, leave me a little comment. Let me know like what size solar and inverter and all that kind of stuff systems would you like to see with it? Now the gas grill hookup is coming off the side of the RV. So as we know, that does define it technically speaking as a propane cooker hooker. It does not come off the back side. When the gas comes off the back side, we know that is called a propanus. That is nerdism number 37 if you are keeping track. Um, on the back here, you see that tankless on-demand water heater. You also see a ladder to get you up to that fully walkable roof. Let's take a little bit of a walk on the wild side up there, peek around. You see the 165-watt uh, the solar panel. Um, if you are planning to do some boondock dry camping, that 165 panel, I don't feel will reliably completely offset the demands of like your lights, fans, and especially that 12 volt fridge. I think it will give you some extended time. I think that if you had a second, say like a uh, wet battery, AKA lead acid battery, common battery, or if you choose to go with a couple lithiums, you could probably extend that. The charge controller on this, I believe you could expand upon a little bit. But again, that kind of goes back to that question I have of, you know, would you be interested in seeing uh, a more advanced kind of extended um, untethered package? Now, when I saw that that kitchen kind of forward-ish in the middle and a rear bathroom, I expected to have a two-headed sewer monster. We do not. That is a single sewer hookup. They managed to get that all plumbed and hooked together. And uh, personally, I am glad to see it. That is just one thing. That it just makes this much, much easier. Now, a big thank you to Grand Design for staging up a bunch of these RVs. I had so many requests for so many different Imagine models. I just called down and I said, hey, look, I, there's a ton of people that want to see this stuff. Could you help me out? And they they pulled 10 units in for me to get my hands on uh, here over two days of recording for you. So leave a little note, say, hey, Thanks, Grand Design. Thanks, Imagine, for helping make this happen today. And if there's other models you'd like to get on the hit list, whether it's a Grand Design or not, let me know. I'll do my best. I do try to fulfill those where I can, but keep in mind, you can submit requests a lot faster than I can record videos. So until next time, check the link in the video description to see where we have one parked. You can check MSRP there on an individual model at the time you're curious or serious, one click away. No need to give us your grandmother's uh, maiden name uh, you know, for the Nigerian Prince import tax or anything like that. Uh, by the way, there's actually a story. There literally was once a Nigerian prince who died in this like uh, dive motel in America with just millions of dollars with him. I feel like the poor guy couldn't find anybody to give his money away to. <laughs> but never mind all that. Um, <laughs> when you're ready, we're ready. Ooh, I, I went way off the rails on this one. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. I swear sometimes, you ever notice how my videos have a tendency to end like the, 
the 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 end of an ACDC song like the song was rocking along and then they're just like 